And is there much personalization in the book? Okay, personalization is so important, uh, in my opinion. If we don't personalize a lesson for students, we don't engage them. The student comes to class and say, well, I'm learning English, but why am I learning it? What's in it for me? Now, you might say to them, well, in the future, you might need to work overseas or in your job, you might need to communicate with people in other countries. But for some students, that might be a long way off. For some students, they may already need English straight away so they can see the relevance of it. But it's important that you personalize it to them so they see a logic behind what they're doing. The other thing is, of course, with National Geographic materials, uh, the contexts tend to be global. I mean, in one page, you might be reading um, a text about uh, somebody living in South Africa. You turn the page, you might be reading somebody uh, living in Peru, and you'll probably find some texts that are about Mexico. In fact, you will. Um, but sometimes the students might say, well, I don't know anything about Peru. I don't even know where, say, the capital Lima is. Um, for me, one answer as a teacher is to say, well, now's your chance to find out. And um, the other thing is, because just to go back on that, because it, when students leave the classroom, I like them to be have learned English, but I also like them to have learned something new about the world. And I think they get that with the life series. But the other thing about personalization is it's about maybe reading about somebody else in the world and the way they do something in their culture, and then saying, what's it like for you? How does this relate to you? So for example, if you've just read a text about some kind of local dish that somebody eats and you think mm, I don't like sound of that food but then you say to the student now describe a dish from your country the student kind of has to reflect and think okay what's the language I need to describe that dish but also I wonder how other people would see it and so there's a kind of an interesting cross-cultural dimension there so you're really creating global learners when you approach the lesson like that. So personalization is really important. Let me just share a page with you from the life book and show you where you might find moments of personalization. So one thing you wanna look out for when you're using life is the my life icon. And that's an indication that personalization is happening on the page. So if we take a look at an actual page, this is from a unit on history which I always think is quite challenging to personalize for students, particularly younger students. Uh, but this one's about the history of video gaming. Now, if you look right at the end there where the red arrow is, that shows you that at the end of most pages in life, you'll see a My Life icon, and it's connected with a speaking task in which students are given a speaking task where they personalize the language from the whole lesson. So they're relating the topic and the language to their own lives. So they're talking about their lives, my life. So personalization is always there at the end. But actually in most lessons, you'll also find the first exercise, the, the lead in or the engage exercise is asking students a few questions about the, what they know about the topic and their own experience. So often personalization happens at the beginning of a life lesson as well. And in a 90 minute class, for example, I usually try to include a little bit of personalization in the middle of the lesson. So in this one, students are asking some questions. So they've practiced uh, vocabulary linked to verb plus prepositions, then they practice it in a gap fill to create some questions, and then they ask each other the questions. But personalization isn't just about students asking and answering questions about their own lives. It's also about personalization of content. So here's an example of another life lesson. This is uh, students learning the vocabulary. They need to talk about places in a city and to give directions. Well, I was using this material with my students in Oxford because I like to try out the material that I've written. And my students were living in Oxford. So of course they were learning the language but in the context of Atlanta. So once we'd done the work on the page, I then brought in a map of Oxford and they, they looked at places in Oxford and gave each other directions. 
So I was trying to personalize the content in the book, but then I also took it another step further and I gave all my students post-it notes and I asked them to write their five favorite places on post-it notes. And then we created a new city on the board and they talked about the places they like to visit and they gave each other directions around this new city that they personalized. That for me, is when real personalization happens because it's not just personalization asking the students to talk about their own lives it's actually students personalizing the content creating the content bringing something new whether that might be putting post-it notes on the board with their own ideas or it might be even asking them to take their own phones and take a photograph of something bring the photograph to the next lesson and give a presentation. Life is quite a nice book to do that with because they see photographs by really good photographers and lots of your students like taking photographs. So if you've done a unit uh, called Places, they might have seen photographs of interesting places and then for homework, they take a photograph of a place they like, they bring the photograph to the next lesson and they give a little presentation about the photograph and why they took it and what it shows.